that strap here and you're going to trim all this light colored stuff off of it. Just barely fillet it off there. See that? You're going to cut in just like you're filleting a fish. That's your, this is your end result right here. Mm. Pure meat. Oh yeah. About every one inch. I leave mine about an inch thick because when I pan fry it or grill it I want to cook it real quick on the outsides and leave the inside nice and pink. Venison can be overcooked so quick and then it just tastes rubbery and it's I cannot stand it. I, I like my meat to be juicy. Now there ain't nothing wrong with a well done steak. Done right it can still be good but I like my meat thick so I cut them in one inch pieces and so now that's one strap I'm going to show you another way which is butterfly a lot of people like to butterfly their straps All right, butterfly back strap simple a lot of people like to do it this way I enjoy it occasionally you do have to leave that membrane on the bottom that's about the only difference uh, I like to do the nugget way for it's good either grilled or especially if you just roll them in some flour and you know cook them. I'll probably do that and show you. But this is how you do butterfly steaks right here. Butterfly your back strap. What you gonna do? Take your chunk of meat there, your strap. You're gonna come over one inch, go down to the membrane, come over another inch, and go all the way through. There you go. As far as uh, visually goes, this is a lot. I mean, this is a, a very good-looking cut of meat right here. You do have a little bit of that membrane through the center, but when you're eating it, it just peels right off, so it ain't no big deal. One inch, all the way through. Very good looking piece of meat. Once again, when you're back, when you're butterflying your back strap, keep them thick. If you want them juicy, you're gonna have to cut them thick. Uh, venison should be medium, medium rare. That's gonna be your best flavor. Well done is just fine, but uh, this is just how I prefer it. If you're gonna do them well done, you might cook them or cut them a little thinner. But I mean, even this. You cook that well done, it's still going to be juicy in the middle. So about one inch is about standard for venison backstrap. Some of the stuff you're going to be needing when you're doing your own meat, your own processing is, you know, plastic bags. You got a whole bunch of them from great value. I got a whole bunch of storage bags, all they are just a Ziploc bag I guess. Great value, you ain't got to spend a whole bunch of money. 
freezer paper. That right there is going to be about $6. Of course, you need your scotch tape. And uh, all I do is throw them in the bag, push all the air out, zip it up. Right here, like this. Get them into that stage first, all the air out of them. Then I wrap them in freezer paper and stick them in the freezer. Uh, I don't know how long they'll last, but around my house, if you, this is all going to be gone by next year. This is all going to be gone by October 1st, 2011. So I know they sell them f food things that save your food for two and three years or whatever, but it's, there's no need really here because it's all going to be gone within a year. I've never had any meat go bad using this system. Uh, so I, I'll say it'll last a year, you know, just to be safe, at least a year. But you don't need a whole lot of fancy vacuuming things, you know, you can do that. But all I'm using is Ziploc bags, freezer paper, tape, and uh, it's just as fresh when you take it out six, seven months down the road as it is right now.